Welcome to episode seven of Where Are They Now? I'm your host and team broadcaster with the Ottawa Junior Senators, David A. Decipio. Today, we're joined with defenseman with the Sherbrooke Phoenix of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and also happened to wear number seven with the Ottawa Junior Senators last year, Maxime Blanchard. Maxime, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. All right, Max, you only spent one season with the Ottawa Junior Senators, but it was quite an eventful season for you. You took the reins as the number one of the number one uh, D-men on the blue line uh, for OJS. But let's go way back uh, to a younger yourself in Welland, Ontario. Uh, where did you learn to play the game of hockey? Uh, I actually learned when I was about probably three, four years old. Uh, we had this, my dad would always build this rink in the backyard during the winter. And uh, it's where I learned to skate. It's where I learned how to first hold my first my first hockey stick and uh, learn a stick handle and shoot and all that. So uh, that's probably where it started. And uh, yeah, so. When did you know that, uh, or when did you make the transition uh, to become a defenseman? Uh, well, when I first started um, in Tyke, we just kind of played all every position there and, and just kind of got used to playing forward defense, even a little bit of goalie. But I think right when I got into novice, uh, the rep team in, in Pelham, where I was living, uh, they needed more defensemen. So I just decided to kind of, they put me there in the tryouts and I just kind of stayed there uh, my whole career. So, yeah. Uh, were there any specific defensemen you watched growing up? Of course, uh, by the time you were growing up, the Niagara Ice Dogs were a kind of a powerhouse in the Ontario Hockey League with defensemen Jamie Oleksiak and Dougie Hamilton on the blue line. Who are some of the guys that you looked up to? For the Ice Dogs, I can think of a couple right away. Uh, uh, of course, like you say, Alexiak and Dougie Hamilton, but there was also uh, Jesse Graham that I used to watch a lot and Vince Dunn, of course. Uh, when uh, when we, were, we used to go watch the games, I'd always watch them and how they command the blue line and command the ice. Uh, in the NHL, uh, my, my family, we were big fans of Nick Lidstrom. We'd watch him play all the time and how efficient he was with, with him without the puck, uh, playing defense and uh, contributing on offense. And uh, of course, being Ottawa fans, we watched a lot of Carlson and love the way he plays and, and the way he, he he commands the puck on offense. So, uh, yeah, those are kind of the guys that I was watching growing up. So, so we touch on the Ice Dogs, uh, local Niagara area kid you are. Um, the Gatorade Garden City Complex, the Jack Apecliffe Arena, is probably one of the most uh, story uh, booked uh, rinks in the entire Ontario Hockey League. The small capacity, the small uh, neutral zone. How often would you? Uh, go to Ice Dogs games and what are your, some of your fondest memories from that rink? It's actually funny because I think I went to a couple of games there before and that's when like the Hamiltons were there and uh, Strom was there and stuff like that so those were always they, they had a really good team back then and I think the small rink really adds to the energy uh, for all the games you know everyone's right in it right on top of the ice and it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun uh, but I actually got to play a lot in that rink as well especially when we were younger uh, we'd play uh, St. Catharines that always played out of that rink the St. Catharines Falcons and uh, so we got to play in a lot too. And when we were younger, it, it seemed like such a big ice because the stands and everything like that. But when we got older, we, that's when we kind of realized how small the ice actually was. So uh, yeah, but uh, it's it's right in the middle of St. Catharines and it's it's really nice rink there. And uh, yeah, I still skate on it, still train there all the time. So yeah. Now your minor hockey days in AAA, you were a member with the Southern Tier Admirals. One guy that comes to, to mind is Colby Ambrosio, who was a fourth round pick of the Colorado Avalanche in this past NHL draft that you had the chance to play with. Uh, take me through your minor hockey days. Uh, any coaches that uh, you owe credit to, the, to the player you are today? Well, yeah, all my coaches there. Uh, you know, I had I had a lot of coaches growing up there and, uh, you know, Coach Scott Doan and and uh, Kevin Rosebrug and all that. And I, I got to learn. They, they were all learning experiences there. They uh, you know, uh, they all taught me different things and, and how to be the player that I am today. And, uh, but of course, even when my minor hockey was over, also uh, playing at Ridley, I learned a lot from Coach Mike McCord as well. And uh, I played two years there. And those are probably the years where I really got to develop and kind of turn into the D that I, I kind of envisioned myself to be. And I knew the things I had to work on. And, uh, and then, of course, going to Ottawa is even another step higher and still seeing the things I need to work on and getting to work on with them with Marty. Uh, I had a great opportunity to work with Coach Mayo and, and Marty and, and all them. And uh, I got to work on a lot of things. And uh, finally, that's how that's how I got here. So with all their help. Now, after your uh, your midget years, you decided to go uh, to prep school route. Uh, usually guys go junior B, junior A, uh, but you decided to go uh, two years at Ridley College. Uh, why make that decision to play prep school hockey? When we kind of, when we were thinking about what we were going to do, what I was going to do, 
Uh, I'd played a little bit of junior B, a couple junior B games um, at the end of my minor midget year when our season ended. We lost out in the playoffs, but our local team, Pelham Panthers, were still in the in the playoffs. So I got to play a couple of games with them. But uh, Ridley came uh, with an opportunity to play, and uh, after going for a visit, and they have a really beautiful campus, and the the school there is top notch, top quality in, in Canada, and uh, it's just the the experience to be able to play hockey get that exposure to NCAA schools while getting that top tier uh, education was, was, you know, a priority of, to me and my family. And we thought, you know what, we have the opportunity and, and uh, to get, to be able to, f to get that education and be able to play high level hockey was a major plus for us. So that uh, finally, that was the, the, the factor that kind of made my decision to, to go to Ridley. Now you won two championships in that league, uh, the MPHL. Uh, take, walk me through those uh, two seasons for you. Uh, it was good. Well, the first season I was I was a rookie, so uh, I got to learn a lot from the veteran defensemen and the veteran players on the team. And uh, they had they had a win already like established winning culture and winning team. And of course, Owen Cole was on that team and Colin Marshall. Uh, so you know I got to learn a lot from them as well. And and that first season was a lot of fun because I, they just kind of showed me the ropes and and we all played together as a team and won that championship, which was really really exciting. But the second year, I'd say. They're very, two diff very different years. You know, the, the first year I was learning from everyone. The second year I was more, I was still learning. Of course, I, I'm always learning, but uh, it was, I had, I had that, uh, that responsibility as well to show uh, the younger players, you know, how, what it takes to win and things like that. And uh, it, was, it was a very different season, but at the same time, it ended up with the, the same end result. And, you know, both years were super fun. And, and uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was a great experience. You were named captain in your final season, which is now two seasons ago. What did that honor mean to you? Oh, it was a huge honor, you know, just to see the, the long list of captains that came before me. And, uh, you know, it, it always comes with a great responsibility. And it's it not always has to do with hockey. You know, like the, the boys were, were going to school together, we're in the classroom together. So it's always about, you know, setting the right example and, and leading the boys, you know, to make sure we get all our schoolwork done and stay stay on top of it when we're gone all those weekends to play games. So, uh, you know, but it was, it was a great honor. And, you know, I got to share it with, a lot of the guys too, the assistant captains and, and stuff like that. And also the guys that didn't wear letters, you know, there, there's always a lot, every guy's a leader on the team. So, you know, they made my job easy and uh, yeah. Ridley college has become a, I guess, picking spree for, for Martin Dagenet and company at OJS. It started with Colin Marshall and Owen Cole uh, yourself. And now Robbie Stewart, who's a part of the Ottawa junior senators. Uh, what uh, like, was there any, pre-scouts that you had with uh, coach Jamie Mayo and Martin Dagene and what led you uh, to make the decision to come to Ottawa? Uh, well, first of all, Owen and, and Colin had a big influence on it. I, I obviously I knew that they went to OJS and seeing the year that they were having and the year that the team was having uh, throughout the year and, and their run to uh, uh, the Centennial cup and, and, you know, Fred page and winning the Bogart and all that, uh, that definitely was, was a high interest for, for me, you know, going into a, wanted to go to a team that would win and things like that. Uh, but I had actually, uh, I'd gone and chosen a team to play in the States and uh, with import rules and things like that, uh, I didn't end up having that spot on the team. So I actually made the transition to go to OJS halfway through the summer. Uh, so it was, it was kind of short notice, but luckily uh, they had, they had some room for me and, and uh, yeah, it ended up being an awesome season and I never take, never trade that for anything. And it was a team, really a season, bunch of ups and downs, lots of guys in and out of the lineup. Um, how tough was it or uh, as a transition for you going from prep school hockey uh, to junior A hockey? Uh, I'd say it was def there definitely was a transition. Um, at, at first, I was I, I wouldn't say my my structure game was a little bit kind of needed to get have some work on because uh, I guess prep was a little bit more. You can kind of you can kind of get away with some of the mistakes, uh, but in 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 Ottawa and the CCHL, you know, you, you got to be you're held accountable for those mistakes, and you know you got to. I had to fix my game quick, and I and I kind of kind of exposed the things I needed to work on, and but over time I got to work on them, and I think that you know I did a pretty good job of working on the things I needed work, and also trying to take take advantage of my opportunities when I got them, and uh, so I definitely say there's a little bit of an adjustment period, but. All in all, I, I trusted in my abilities, and uh, I, I think I was able to play. Uh, I, I jumped in the lineup and and uh, got to play my game. So, yeah. It was a bunch of uh, different style defensemen on the team. You had more of the offensive-minded um, 
who I also cared about his backhand and, and Tucker McIntosh and guys like Faisal Allsafe uh, and Bailey Brandt uh, and those veterans in Allsafe and Brandt. Uh, who are some of the guys that you lean to um, being a leader yourself um, to make your transition easy in the locker room, uh, adjusting to a new set of guys? Uh, well, like you said, uh, uh, Bailey and Faisal, you know, those are my my, my go-to guys being the veterans on the team and, and they were there the year prior when they had that successful run. So, you know, they, whenever I had a question or any worries or anything like that, I went to them and they, uh, they told me, you know, all the, all the right answers and things like that. So, you know, I really appreciate it over them. And of course, Tucker, I, I lived with them. So uh, we always had each other's backs. We were always talking about the games and the practices and, you know, we learned from each other, learned a lot from him, uh, you know, the way that he handles the puck and the way he skates the puck. So, you know, uh, we all, we'd always talk to each other and even the other teammates, you know, we'd always, we had a really tight group and really tight decor. And we always learned from each other, respected each other, we helped each other out. So yeah, it was a really nice group. Any funny stories on the ice, off the ice in practice? You want to expose anybody right now? Oh, uh, I got to think of one. Uh, I have to, I have to shout out my, my buddy, Brendan Bays. Uh, funny story. We were playing a game there. It was after Christmas break. I think it was one of our first games back. And he, uh, we were wearing our, I think it was, we switched colors at, after Christmas. So I think we were wearing our, um, I don't know. I think, you know, I think it was our red jerseys. And so we're wearing our blue helmets with our red jerseys. And we're about to go on for warm-ups. And all the guys are wearing their blue helmets. And you got one guy, one guy sticking out in the line before going on the ice. And it's Baser with his white helmet on. And, oh, it was so funny. I couldn't stop laughing. And he he, he <laughs> I told him to go change it and he thought he didn't have enough time he's panicking but uh, eventually he changed it and, and no one we all looked we all were wearing the same color helmets but it was pretty funny in the moment and now take it through the off season um you signed with the Sherbrooke Phoenix in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League uh what led you um to say I want to go the Canadian Major Junior route rather than the NCAA program I'd say like I was I was pretty set on on going the school route I, I figured you know I'm going into my 19 year old season. And I didn't really consider the CHL route to be there anymore per se, because I'm, I'm a little bit older than what they usually the, the prospects are going into the league. Um, but of course the pandemic had a huge impact on my decision. Uh, I, the border was closed at the time and I wasn't sure uh, what seasons were going to be like, who, which, which teams are going to be playing the year after uh, what the seasons were going to look, look like, uh, you know, and, and what the recruiting was going to look like for the schools in the States. So, I kind of played it out. I, I waited a, a pretty long time before I made my decision. Um, just kind of seeing how the border, like how the, the pandemic goes and how it grew and, and what was kind of what rules were changing. But uh, uh, in the end, uh, Sherbrooke was offering me a spot on the team and, and, you know, they were, we were going to have camp and we we're going to have some pre preseason games. We didn't know what was going to happen after that, if things were going to shut down, but there was a, there was a kind of, I knew that I was going to be able to train and practice with the team and things like that. So eventually, you know, that just kind of, they were, they were offering me a spot and it was the, the offer that I had. Uh, I didn't have uh, any, like I was talking to some schools and things like that, but I had nothing official, nothing like that. I was going to have to play another year to try to get it. And with no guarantee of another season, I just decided to, you know what, they're offering me a very generous uh, uh, package and, and uh, I decided to, to join the Phoenix. And Sherbrooke was a team that uh, prior to, the stop in the season, the cancellation, they were atop the entire country uh, in standings, a much older team lost a lot of guys. Did you, and was that, that also, uh, I'd assume factored in your decision saying, Hey, I could slide in here and play on a regular basis. Yeah, no, uh, they, it was no secret that they had a great team and, and uh, you know, they had a lot of great players on the team. And of course that, that led to my decision. I want to be able to, even if we didn't play games, I want to be able to compete against those guys every day in practice and be able to learn from them and to continue kind of growing my game and learning from others. Uh, and, but recently we, you know, we made a lot of changes and, and traded a couple of players after the deadline and, and things like that. But uh, now that we've started to play some games here, it's been really good experience and being able to start learning. Like, uh, I mean, the fact that we didn't play many games at the beginning of the year, really kind of, I got to know all the guys and know the way that we play. I got some extra time to learn the systems and the structure. So it was very beneficial to me now that we're playing games that I got to learn the whole system and now I'm able to transition and put that into, into play and during the games. So the QMJHL is the only 
league in the CHL right now that is actually playing regular season games. And if I'm not mistaken, a few months ago, your team had an outbreak and uh, put a cancel or a stop to your season. And then you guys had to go into a bubble, uh, I believe in Quebec city for a couple of weeks, just before Christmas. And now you guys are back um, in another bubble uh, in Shikutumi, I believe. Um, take me through the ups and downs of the season so far. Yeah. Well, it started off pretty good. We had, we played all our preseason games and we started off with two games uh, our two first regular season games in a weekend. And then that's when we find out that the other team had a lot of cases and then which transitioned into us getting tested and then finding out that we had a lot of cases. So we were out for probably a month. Um, and then after right when our, our quarantines ended, we found out that Sherbrooke was going into a red zone. So that means that we weren't allowed to play any games and all the, the shops and the, the businesses were shut down. Uh, so then we had to keep quarantining through that period. And we quarantined all the way through Christmas. We just missed the, uh, the Quebec bubble. So we didn't actually get to play in that one. Um, and then after Christmas is kind of when everything changed, of course, they, they added the curfew and, and things like that in Quebec. So there's, there's some minor rules and changes that are still going on, but um, we've been re re very, very lucky uh, that the league and, and our team has been able to pro provide us, you know, with some games and some competition to play against other teams, still be able to compete and uh, you know, have this opportunity to uh, continue to improve and work on our games. So, uh, you know, I'm forever grateful that uh, I'm, I'm I'm having this opportunity. I'm being able to play, uh, but yeah, it's been it's been definitely a, some ups and downs. There are some shutting down, some getting to play, high hopes, low hopes, you know, kind of things like that. So, but uh, you know, you're just kind of just kind of here for the ride, here for the experience, and you know, it's been really fun so far. So, after the tr after the trade deadline and after Christmas, uh, Sherbrooke brought in your younger brother Alex, who was also at Ridley, and he had signed it in Rockland in the CCHL, and now gets the opportunity to join you in Sherbrooke. Uh, how excited are you to now play alongside him? Oh, it's 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 a lot of fun. You know, it, it's it's been our dream since we were little you know, to play in the in the CHL and to be able to play play out there and have, see my brother alongside me on the on the point there. It's it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a dream come true and to share it with him. And uh, yeah, it, it's it was a uh, so he he was being recruited and he came uh, after Christmas and we were training together, practicing together. We lived together in the in the billet, so. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time together and uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. We are, we already have a lot of chemistry. So now we're just kind of, we just still learning the structures and the systems and uh, yeah, we're, we're right on top of it. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, take me inside your hotel room right now. Uh, how's uh, this first bubble for you since you didn't play in the one in Quebec and um, take me through where did the Sherbrooke Phoenix go from here? Uh, yeah. Like uh, the bubble, the bubble experience is nice. Um, you know, there's no fans, of course, and, and we split the rink and there's four teams in the rinks. So we kind of split the rink in four. So we have like our own little dressing room, our own warm up area. It's kind of like our own uh, like lobby kind of, you know, where we, where we do our warm ups or stretches, things like that. Uh, and it's 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 pretty cool because like it feels like I'm in a minor hockey tournament almost. You know, you can see the teams around the rink and things like that. You can watch the like we're not allowed to watch the other games, but you can see them kind of you can hear them when they're on the ice, when they're practicing and you can like you kind of know like what's going on with the other teams as well. So it's, it's pretty cool to like check the scores and see like, oh, what's going on with the other teams and then you ha having to play your own game and things like that. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a lot of fun and it's a new experience, but it's definitely, you know, a, a learning experience and it's a fun one. For we were talking earlier about Brendan Bays, who had that uh, funny little altercation in, in warm up. But now you guys get to play against each other in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Uh, how have you guys texted uh, about the one day playing against each other? And what's that experience going to be like when it presents itself? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the year, we, would, we were talking all the time there, like when we first got our new equipment and all our new clothes and stuff. It was pretty exciting, you know, to finally be part of that, that you know, the, the QMJHL and part of the CHL and you know after every game we, we usually talk to each other and see what's going on how we're doing making sure that we're both doing okay and supporting each other and you know uh, just looking forward to that one day where we'll be able to play against each other and you know we kind of kind of know what we both of us what we've been through and what we've learned and you know playing with OJS you know we've had that same we shared experience so it's a lot of fun to kind of see like uh, you know how we're doing you know rep always representing OJS and and you know, uh, just seeing, you know, like we, yeah, we're just we're good, we're good buddies, so we're always keeping in touch there and and uh, telling each other stories and, and things like that. So yeah, just wishing that. Of course, I wish the best for him, and, and I know that he's doing great over there. So uh, just looking forward to the day we get to play each other. All right, Maxime, it's the time of the podcast where I turn it over to you to to shout anybody out and uh, say hi and 
Uh, anything to say about your time with the Ottawa Junior Senators organization? Uh, well, I'll, I'll shout out all my teammates from last year there. And, uh, you know, I miss all the guys and, and it's just too bad that our season got cut short. But, you know, I, I had a lot of faith in our team and I knew that we were going to gonna have a big run there in the playoffs. But, you know, I miss all the boys and, and I wish them all, uh, whether they're playing hockey or going to school, I wish them all the best. And uh, uh, shout out, of course, to the coaching staff for uh, what, what they did for me last year. And I got to learn a lot from them. And uh, they're a big reason why I'm here today. And, uh, of course, uh, my family for giving me the opportunity to play there last year and, and to be here right now. And, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, Maxim, thank you so much for taking the time. Best of luck uh, the rest of the season with Sherbrooke. And we're, uh, we'll see you sometime down the line. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.